Well, how many feels poor? Well, how many feels rich? That might be the best question. Poor rich men. That's what we are. Praise God. On our way to heaven. And uh, there's some here tonight, I'm sure, that's been on the journey for many, many years. But if you just got on the journey, you've come too far to turn and go back. You've come too far. If you just got saved, if you're a brand new convert, you came too far to turn and go back. Canaan land is just in sight. I really believe that. Amen. Let's turn to the book of Ezekiel tonight, chapter number 35. Ezekiel chapter number 35. I'd like to begin reading. Uh, I'll just, I think I'll go ahead and start in verse 1 and read a few of these verses here. Ezekiel chapter number 35, beginning in verse number 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men. In thy hills, in thy valleys, in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations and thy cities shall not return Ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. I'd like to preach tonight on the devil's dilemma. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine. We will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Praise God. Amen. How many is glad to know the Lord's there? The Lord is here. Hallelujah. I'm I'm sure that there's a, a, a lot of prophetic things in this chapter. In the whole book of Ezekiel, Daniel, a lot of things. But the Lord got to dealing with me about this one verse. <clears throat> it's a verse that we've read a lot of times, probably, you Bible readers. But I don't know, it just, I felt like the Lord dealt with me, even in my own heart. Because I noticed that in this text, it seems like there is a threat that had come from Edom or Mount Seir, or Esau, concerning Israel. And the prophet said to the enemy, here's the threat, or this is what you've said. These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it. That was the threat. The first thing that I noticed in this text, would it seem like that the enemy was boasting, or blatantly threatening Israel, I'm going to overtake you. I'm going to possess you. Because thou hast said, you shall be mine. And I'm going to possess it. And many of us, I feel, 
You know, if we think over our Christian experience, probably we would all testify to the fact that we have heard the enemy's threat. How many's ever been at that place where you have heard the enemy threaten you? Everybody has been there a time or two in our Christian walk with God. We have heard those blatant boastings of the enemy, his diabolical plans, and he tells us I, uh, what he's going to do to us and with us. Several years ago, I remember Brother Billy Jowers. I don't know if he preached at the tabernacle. He's down from Mississippi. He evangelized for a while. He may have preached here, but he always used to say the devil jumps up on my left shoulder because he never does anything right. And he starts lying into my ear and telling me things that he's going to do to me or things that's going to happen to me. And all that is is the boasting of the enemy or the devil trying to make threats, his diabolical plans to destroy us. And truly living for God with a whole heart and a consecrated life and living on that sanctified plane. If you're doing that, you can be sure, my friend, that you're going to be on the devil's hit list. There will be times when he's going to threaten you and attack your mind and come against you. If you're trying to live pure and you're trying to live holy, Satan hates an excellent spirit. The devil hates a, a life that has an excellent spirit. And so you are going to be on the hit list of the devil You're going to at times hear the enemy blatantly boast about what he's going to do with your life, your experience, your heart, your soul, your ministry, your home. The devil is full of threats. And this kind of Christian that's trying to live holy and free from sin and and come out of the world, that kind of Christian is going to feel that there is a constant conflict in his life. We all know that if we ever get to a condition or we arrive at a place in life where Satan is not attacking us or um, having a malicious thrust against us or, or you know, uh, or lying to our heart, then we are really at that point on dangerous ground. But if you're trying to live pure and holy and do what is right in the eyes of the Lord and embrace this Bible, you're going to feel constantly in conflict. Part of the Christian's conflict, the Bible tells us, is not wrestling against flesh and blood, not that actual physical grapple or wrestling with, you know, flesh and blood, but the Bible said that against spirits and principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, how many could say that's where our constant battle lies? Now, there was a time when they threw rotten eggs at the preacher. Old brother Joe Bollinger from Arkansas said there was a time when they whooped preachers. I, 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 you know, probably had some folks that felt like that. But there was a time when they caused ruckus. And you could read about Peter Cartwright, that old mountain preacher. He could tell you some stories about when the boys would ride by on their horses and knock the tent poles out, you know, and try to cause trouble. But most of my ministry, thank God by His grace, I have never had to wrestle anybody over something I preached or said or never had to go out back behind the church and scrap a little over a message that I had. But most of my battles have been a spiritual battle. Can anybody say amen? It's been that constant conflict that, that, that I feel that when the Bible talked about uh, principalities and powers, I feel like that a lot of times these powers oftentimes are in the form of terrible threats. Threats that oppose our faith or our prayer or threats that come from the devil that try to quench our obedience unto God or His Word. Anybody knows what it is to feel like you've been threatened by the devil? Amen, that's a lot of our battle. That's a lot of the grapple and the struggle. Amen. And so, you know, when you look at this text here, I notice that the prophet starts out by recognizing Edom's boast or Edom's threat against Israel. And the prophet marks it down and said, you said that you're going to invade and you said that you're going to possess the land. You said that these countries shall be mine and I will possess it. You know, when you study about Esau and Jacob and even though there was a time of forgiveness, and, and we remember how they met and there was an embrace and there was a forgiveness but but really all down through the generations there has been the Bible even said there had been that perpetual hatred that was there 
And, uh, and Edom felt that brutish malice against Israel. And Edom, which is Esau, or here in the scripture called Mount Seir, amen, is threatening Israel because of this perpetual hatred that's gone on in the heart for years. And Edom feels that Israel at this particular time is going to be easily conquered. And so the enemy begins to boast. Oh, God, how often has our enemy threatened us, amen, and told us that we're going down and that we're going to be easily conquered and that he's going to move in and take over and possess our life. Amen. How many here tonight has felt the devil threaten, amen, with a kind of hatred that, that kind of would halt us and, and hinder us and cause us to stumble? Amen. He threatens to bring terror and threatens, amen, to try our faith. I'm just telling you tonight, my friend, Amen, that if you're doing any good for God at all, amen, you're probably going to uh, feel a constant conflict. Uh, and there's going to be times, uh, amen, when the enemy threatens your heart. Oh, God. I mean, I've had the devil threaten me from, from uh, you know, all the way from singing to praying to preaching to, to witnessing to, to living right. I've even read the Bible and thought I had a message and, and felt threatened that that scripture didn't even mean what it said. Come on now. I mean, how many knows, he man, that the devil, he, he's a, he's a conniver and a schemer. But how many knows that he's also a liar? And he's the father of lies. Oh God. He man, when I got to looking at this text and God, he man, got to dealing with my heart about, I, I seen this enemy here. He man, that was boasting and making threats. He man, against God's children. He man, in my own heart, brother David, that's the way I felt. He man, because I could see, he man, a distinct picture of those. He man, that are trying to live right and those. He man, that are chosen people of God. He man, Spurgeon said this. He said, any virtue that a Christian possesses, he man, you can mark it down that Satan is going to threaten, he man, to drown that virtue in vice, he man, any grace that a good man has, he man, Satan wants to turn it to grief, he man, that's just the kind of battle and the grapple and the struggle, he man, that we are in tonight, he man, whether it's a love that you have for God, he man, that is warm and fervent and passionate, or whether you've got a hope, he man, that's bright and sparkling, or whether you got a patience that God's given you that's that's all enduring, or maybe you got a zeal, amen, that burns like coals on a fire, amen, it don't matter what kind of virtue that it is, if it's anything good, amen, God gave it to you, amen, but all the good things, amen, that a man possesses, amen, the devil hates that, and he does everything that he can, amen, to threaten us, and bring us to a place, amen, I would say tonight, amen, that there's those right here, amen, that have felt the threat of the enemy, oh, come on now, you've heard the boasting, amen, the blatant threat of the devil in your mind, and in your heart, even in this meeting, or even in this service, he said, I'll move in, amen, I'll bring you to desolation, I'm going to overtake you, I'll wreck and ruin, amen, that is the threat of the devil. Anybody ever heard him threat? Oh, God. Every good thing that is produced in your life, the devil hates it, especially your salvation. Hey, man, you're going to be on target. The devil threats. The enemy's boasting. Oh, God. Uh, we, we've had we've had a couple, and I want to be very careful here tonight before I go on. But I, we've had a couple of incidents in our church over the past few years. And there's a man that goes to our church, brother Steve. If I if I described him, you'd realize who he is. But he's a, he's one of the greatest guys, really, that I know. And Brother Philip, he was really one that inspired me as a young boy about preaching. And God moved on him to have a Brush Harbor meeting in our community, Iron Post community right there where our church is. And, and he asked me to get something. You know, I wasn't even, Brother Terry, I wasn't even called to preach yet. I didn't even really know what the call of God was. But there had been a few times that I testified. And, and uh, you know, the Lord would anoint me and I'd feel good about it. And, and I was praying about it. But in that, in that uh, Brush Harbor meeting, I accept the call to preach. 
preach one night. And uh, so this this brother has been very inspiring. He's been an inspiration. He, he's one of those guys that can just break out on a street corner and preach. He man and just seem like reach folks. He man, but you know, a few a few years ago, he went through a terrible mind battle. I'm talking about a holiness preacher that's pastored churches and and evangelized and been in the work of God for years. Oh, come on now. I mean, he was a brick mason by trade, but one of the best bricklayers. He man so talented. He man, it wasn't just a job or an occupation, but I guess it was an art to him in some ways. But, but there were times. He man, I remember when I was 19 laboring for two bricklayers. Now, buddy, I'm gonna tell you, that'll man, break you down and make you sweat. He man, one man said, I'll just try to throw a little gravel in the mud if you want to slow him down. He man, but I didn't dare do that. He man, but you're trying to labor for a couple of bricklayers. Hey man, this brother, he'd been known to, you know, lay, lay 12 or 1500 brick before noon. Uh, 20 some, over 20 something years ago. I mean, he could put them on the line now. But I, I, over the years when he went to struggling, he man, and went to having these mind battles. I, I, I'd seen him spend hours. He man, there'd be uh, maybe a gable or a place it was cut up and we'd have to saw the brick and, and he'd spend hours on one little piece. And there was one particular time that he was going down the road and he was eating an orange. And he threw the orange peeling out. And uh, the devil attacked his mind and said, you know that you're, you know, I know this is going to sound strange, but I'm talking about how the enemy makes threats in our minds. He man, until that brother turned around and went back. He man, and he picked up that orange peeling. And he felt so good about it then and took off. He man, and when he got going down the road, uh, it's, he had threw it in a ditch that was muddy and mud was caked on. And the devil said, he man, that's not your mud, that's somebody else's. And he turned around and went back. He meant and scraped the dirt off the orange peeling. He meant all the cause of an attack. Come on now. He meant you say that's silly. I don't believe. Oh, come on, my friend. I'm telling you when the devil attacks your mind and he come against you blatantly. He meant boasting and saying, I'll have your heart. I'll have your home. I'll have your marriage. I'm going to take you down. When the devil says, I'll move in and I'll possess it. Oh, come on now. I don't know how it makes you feel, amen, but there are times when anxiety arises and fear arises, amen, all it is is a threat of the enemy, amen, and a threat of the devil, oh God, oh God, just a mind battle, there'll be times, there'll be times when you can't get his attention, because he prays, prays, prays constantly. We had a young boy in our church that he felt that almost throughout the whole service, every few seconds, he'd have to raise his hands. Come on now. Now, I know some of you is wondering what kind of people we got. But I'm just talking about the devil is everywhere. Come on now. He's not omnipresent. I remember what Havis Crawford said years ago. He said, when he's two, he can't be fro. And when he's fro, he can't be two. He man, that ought to give us a little hope. He's not, he's not omnipresent. He ain't everywhere. Uh, but there are spirits. Come on now. He man, and there are demons that are loosed in this world. He man, that young boy was so, I guess, in terror because, you know, the devil would say, you're not praising God. He man, God's gonna hold you accountable. He man, need to lift his hands up and put them back down. We might even be standing in the church yard. He'd lift his hands up and put them back down. He man, you say, well, there ain't nothing wrong with praising God. He man, that's right. He meant, but when the devil, he meant, so torments. He meant, your mind until you feel like. He meant, that your motive really is not right. And it really wasn't out of praise and joy. He meant, but it was out of fear. He meant, that he had sinned or blasphemed the Holy Ghost. What are you saying, Brother Kevin? I'm telling you, it's the threat of the enemy. Oh, come on now. And the prophet said, I recognize what the devil's doing. I recognize what the enemy's doing. You're saying you're going to come in and take over and move in and possess. All it is is a threat of the devil. One more thing and I'm moving on. Oh God. We had a family in our church. A good family. I'm not talking about worldly people. Holiness people. And the man was so terrorized by germs. 
He'd have his wife wash his clothes multiple times. He'd carry bleach in his toolbox. He'd wipe his hands in bleach. He'd wipe his mouth in bleach. If we were at a fast food place, or, or if he was there and he paid for his meal, and the cashier would maybe push her hair behind her ear and then, and then hand the money, it was all he could do. It was terror now. It's terror until it got to a place. And, and here's, here's really, here's really where the devil tried to get the upper hand. He'd move off the front and sit in the back because the devil said, you're going to, you're going to open your mouth and the preacher's going to be coming where you are and some of his saliva is going to go into your mouth. You say, that's crazy. I don't believe. I know it, it's all right. You know, but some of these things are humorous. Hey man, but brother, I'm telling you to him, it wasn't to him. It was a battle to him. It was a threat. Uh, come on now to him. Hey man, especially to his wife. Hey man, it was absolute terror. It come to some of our church functions. Hey man, we'd bring food in and everybody would go in fellowship. Hey man, they'd bring their own little meal and stay out in the van. Hey man, have their own little meal out there. Hey man, what are you saying, Brother Kevin? Hey man, I'm telling you hey man, that if the devil could hey man, he'd move in and possess you. Can anybody shout amen? Hey man, he'd come in and overrun you. He'll come in and try to possess. Hey man, you your mind and your thoughts. Oh, come on now. Amen. The devil is boasting and the enemy is making threats. Amen. Against God's children. Oh, come on now. Is there anybody in this house that's never felt the enemy? Amen. Lie. Amen. Have you ever heard? Amen. The attack of the devil in your own heart and the mind. Oh, come on now. It's the threat of the enemy. And I noticed the prophet here said, here's what you said. You said you're going to move in. And you said you're going to possess. And you said you're going to overtake. Oh, hallelujah. And I don't know, but probably at this particular time, that maybe the temple was destroyed and the throne was gone. Come on now. One place the Bible said, hey man, the ravenous beast walked on the wall and ran up and down the streets of Jerusalem. And the enemy said, now would be a good time. Oh, come on now. They're in a low time. And now would be a good time. He man, to possess him and overtake him. But when you read in the latter part of the verse, all of a sudden in the text, amen, we find out that although the enemy is screaming, amen, a boasting threat, amen, our defense shows up. And it's what I call, amen, a blessed barrier. Because the Bible said, amen, whereas, amen, the Lord, amen, was there. All of a sudden it was a dilemma. All of a sudden it was difficult. All of a sudden the enemy came up against the problem. All of a sudden the enemy said, whoa, come on now. He meant, could I tell the devil? He meant that the Lord is still with us. And God is in the house. And the Holy Ghost is in our heart. And the devil may not realize it. But before he can overtake me, he got to go through God. Before he can have my mind, he got to get past God. Before he can wreck my home, he's got to get around God. Can anybody shout amen? The Lord is there. Oh, glory to God. Praise God. Have you heard that the boasting threat? Come on now. Have you heard that constant conflict? You know, and I want to tell you something. Amen. You are perpetually preserved. Because here, in the end of this text, Brother Barrett, amen, is a blessed barrier. The enemy's trying to come in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord, oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. And even though the throne wasn't there, and even though the temple might have gone, and even though where one time was waving cornfields, was now desolation. And the enemy said, now they're in a low state, and I'll overrun them. Amen. But the enemy had forgotten that God had made a covenant. Amen. With Israel. It said, my spirit will be there. There may not be a throne, and there may not be a temple, and there may not be a king. Amen. But my spirit. I felt like somebody, he man, needs to let the devil know, he man, the Lord is here, he man, you may try to lie, 
and you may try to overrun me and you may try to bring me down and you may try to wreck and ruin but you got a dilemma devil you got to contend amen with the very God amen Jehovah Jehovah Shammah the Lord is there I wish I could preach to you a little while tonight oh hallelujah Amen. Has the devil ever said you're going to be mine? I remember reading about Bunyan when he was in prison. And the devil told him, I'm going to cool you off one degree at a time. Come on now. Amen. That's what the devil told Bunyan. And I think that even there was a time, Brother Robert, where Bunyan had went to a companion or a friend while he was in prison and said, here's what the devil's telling me. The devil's telling me that he's going to move in and cool me off one degree at a time until I lose hope and faith in God. And that so-called companion that was in prison with him said, you're probably right. You're probably right. Come on now. He is going to overtake you. Oh, hallelujah. I hate to have, have Job's comforters. Uh, amen. Show up uh, when I'm under the threat of the devil, don't you? Uh, come on now. Uh, amen. Does anybody understand? Uh, amen. That herein lies the truth. Uh, amen. Satan may have a threat. Uh, amen. But we have the Trinity. Uh, amen. God the Father. Uh, amen. God the Son. Uh, amen. And God the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. I'm telling you. Uh, amen. The Lord is there. And all because that God is there. Hey Amen. The devil's got a dilemma on his hands. Hallelujah. I don't care how much he lies. How much he threats. How much he breathes fire. Hey Amen. You belong to God. I said you belong to God. I said if you're saved. They're covered in the blood. Hey Amen. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to God. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is there. Well, it's the Lord to help me preach this out tonight. Oh, God. All of a sudden, I see this great difficulty in this text that the enemy seems to have forgotten about this dilemma. Come on now. There's desolation and there's emptiness. And Israel's at a low estate. And we're going to possess it. But I like the way the scripture put it. Amen. Whereas, or they forgot that the Lord was there. Oh, hallelujah. Does that bring you any kind of security tonight? To know that the Lord is there? Now, I know, I know that when I'm up here preaching it, it's one thing. Well, oh, Vance Havner said, amen, you can stand on the riverbank and preach it like John the Baptist. Oh, come on now. Amen, it's one thing to stand on the riverbank and preach it. But he said it's another thing to sit in the jailhouse and take it. Oh, come on now. Amen, when the Lord's passing by and he's healing everybody else and he's touching everybody else and he's healing blinded eyes. Amen, he's opening up prison doors and he's setting the captive free and old John the Baptist, all he gets is don't be offended. Amen. And all the time, can you imagine? Amen. The boasting of the devil. Can you imagine the threat? Amen. Of the devil. Amen. But the devil's dilemma was this. While John was in prison, amen. Jesus was with him. Can anybody shout amen? Amen. And when he died, amen. What the Lord say? There ain't never been a man. Amen. Like John the Baptist. Because he loved me to the end. And he believed me to the end. And he didn't get bitter. But he got better. Hallelujah. i tell you what. You need to remind the devil that the Lord is there. You can lie. And you can try to possess and overrun. And overtake. And bring me down. But you got a dilemma on your hand. Now, there's some folks, it might be easy for the devil to take. Do you hear me? There are some people that's living so loose and at such a distance with God that it might be easy for the devil to possess some and take some. But there are some that's got it in their mind. I'm going to keep the Lord right here. Praise God. I might get a little low. And I might get a little discouraged. Come on now. 
Amen. But I've got the truth. Amen. I hear the threat. But I've got the Trinity. Amen. And the prophet said, hey, here's going to be your difficulty. Here's going to be your difficulty. You forgot the Lord was there. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to encourage somebody tonight and let them know. Amen. That even though the enemy threats, he can also be thwarted. Amen. By that effectual barrier. Amen. That everlasting barrier. Amen. The Lord is there. Amen. Is there anybody in this house? Amen. That's glad to know that he'll be a fence all around us. He'll be a wall of fire. Amen. All about us. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And we can run into it. And we can be saved. Is there anybody glad to know the Lord is here? He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. Amen. Why don't you let the devil know? Amen. The Lord is here. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody may be here tonight and you're feeling threatened. How many knows that affects us when we feel threatened? I know sometimes, you know, when I was in, when I was a little boy, my dad wasn't saved and before mom got sanctified and got the Holy Ghost, I was in, I was in peewee baseball and I got beamed really bad one day by a hardball. I mean, like to knock me slap out. You know what my coach was saying, Brother Mike? Shake it off, boy. Get up and shake it off. Oh, come on now. I'd like to shook him. Come on now. How many knows we don't always shake it off? Ah, oh, come on, friend. Sometimes we're hurt so bad we don't always shake it off. Sometimes we're under such attack. Amen. It's hard to get our head up. Amen. Much less our hands up. Amen. We don't always have a melody. We might have a song and we might be saying the words, but we're missing the melody. And the reason why is because we're under attack and the devil is threatening us. Amen. And lying to us. Amen. We need to rise up tonight. Amen. And let the devil know you got a dilemma on your hands. Oh, come on now. Hang on. Just lay down. Give up. Hey man, throw in the towel. Let you possess it and wreck it and ruin it and mar and tear it down. Hey man, we need some shamas that'll stand their ground. And anybody shout amen. Hey man, and let the devil know, buddy, if you're gonna try to ruin me, you got a difficult thing. Not because of me, who I am, but because the Lord's there and the Trinity's there and the Holy Ghost power is there. And God the promise and he'd never leave us and he'd never forsake us can you say man oh hallelujah oh glory to God and I'm going to tell you the enemy here in this text thought that Israel would be an easy conquest but the Lord was there can anybody see plainly the devil's dilemma here Woo! He thought he'd just move into Israel and take over and possess it. But the Lord was there. Oh, hallelujah. We have to refuse to be overrun and overcome. You ever heard that old saying about being a doormat? Maybe a, there'd be trouble in a marriage or something. One of them rise up and say, I ain't going to be no doormat. You know, in other words, you ain't walking over me. You ain't running over me. Wipe the feet on me. I guess that's an Oklahoma saying or something. Well, I read something today. Woo! Talked about doormats. Amen. D stands for a dependent order of really meek and timid souls. Doormat. Can you picture that? Dependent order of really meek and timid souls. A doormat. Their insignia is a yellow caution light. Praise God. And their motto is this. The meek shall inherit the earth. If that's okay with everybody. <laughs> Whoa, hallelujah. Just timid. 
Praise God. Like old Brother L.D. Moore said, that young boy at Bristol rose up against him and said, you know, kind of had disrespect. He said he was going to fight Brother Moore. And Brother Moore said, what do you want me to do, son? Lay down. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, man, you ever get tired of being the devil's doormat? Is there anybody in this house? I don't know about you, but I got a fighting spirit coming on me tonight because I get tired of him trying to overrun. He man and overrule our services. I get tired of him interrupting my prayer. I get tired. Now, come on now, being the devil's doormat. Praise God. He man, I know that Satan is tantalizing and he's terrorizing those. He man, trying to get you to live. He man, a timid life. He man, he's got the power. Then I'm going to tell you when the devil has the most power. Are you ready? When we cower. Praise God. If you want to give the devil power, you just cower. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The devil wants you stooped. And then he wants you stopped. Amen. That's why he threatens. Amen. That's why he gets in your face. That's why he gets in your ear. That's why he plays tricks on your mind. Amen. But instead of being a sit down and stay quiet, why don't you be a stand up and say it straight and tell the devil, you ain't going to be my doorman. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to be your problem. You're going to be, amen. I'm going to be your dilemma. I'm going to make it. When's the last time that you made it difficult for the devil? Amen. To interrupt your prayer. When's the last time that you made it hard for the devil to stoop you in worship? Can anybody shout amen? Hallelujah. I know. Sounds kind of cocky up here. Brother, Brother Benny Sutherland said one time, he said, you know, when we feel inspired, sometimes we say things. And we say, where's the devil at? Let me at him. Come on now. And then when he shows up, we say, oh, God, where are you at, Lord? Come on here. Amen. But really think about this. How many times have we missed out? Amen. Because we was a doormat. And we just let the devil walk right over us and run right over us. Amen. I'm going to tell you, my little calendar ain't full of divine healings. And it ain't full, Brother Steve, of true conversions. Come on now. But I refuse to let the devil, amen, just run over me. Amen. And use me for a doormat. Amen. And just live timid. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anybody in this house? You know what? We spend too much time running scared. And we ought to be running scarred. Amen. Letting the devil know, hey, amen, we're going to fight your tooth and toenail. Praise God, we're going to pray. If we got to pray all by ourselves. Amen, we're going to stand. If we have to stand alone. Amen, how can we do it? Because the Lord's there. That's why we can pray. Amen, the Lord's there. That's why we can lift up holy hands. The Lord is there. Can anybody shout amen? I'm tired of being timid. Amen, let's turn the battle, Brother Randy. Let's turn it to the gate and let the devil know that we're not going to be run over by the devil. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh. I guarantee you in this revival, and this is the last night, but I guarantee you in this revival, there's been times you were moved on to be obedient in some way by the Holy Ghost and the inspiration of God by some way. If you're living on a sanctified plane, like I started out earlier, and you're truly living holy and consecrated unto God, you came here to worship and lift up, lift up His name, I guarantee you, praise God, there's been at least one in this meeting that felt the unction to be obedient. But the devil said, thou hast said. Did you notice how the prophet brought this out? Thou hast said. Oh, God. And the devil said. How many went out and got into their car and said, well, honey, I really felt like walking around the altar. But I felt like singing a song. But I felt like standing up. But come on now. 
Oh, come on, y'all looking around. Hey, Amen. Maybe we need to do like they did at the last supper and say, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Come on now. We know who we are. Hey, Amen. But we've allowed the devil. Hey, Amen. To make us out to be a doormat. Oh, come on now. Hey, Amen. But you remember all them revivals. Hey, Amen. That you got locked away in your memory. You remember all of them meetings where you saw the power of God. It was because there was a generation. Hey, Amen. That said, devil. Hey, Amen. You got a dilemma on your hands. Oh, come on now. Hey, Amen. They had a devoted prayer life. And they walked totally before the Lord. And when it was time to worship, they worshiped. When it's time to sing, they sang. And anybody shout amen. And they didn't let the devil have one service or one revival or one prayer meeting. Oh, the Lord's there. Hey, amen. Is anybody in the house realize that he's still here? I said he is still here. Hey, amen. God is still with us even now. Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. And so because of the threat, and I'm closing. Man, man, because of the threat. Are you running scared tonight? J.H. Zorthian. I'll tell this and I'm going to close. He read about a tiny boy that was killed in a traffic accident. J.H. Zorthian was a, he was an artist by trade. He painted murals in 42 different cities in the early, even in the early 40s. He's very talented. But while reading this article, he read about a tiny boy killed in a traffic accident. His stomach churned as he read the article and thought about this tragedy happening to his own children. Feeling threatened and plagued in his own mind and a fear and an inescapable anxiety, he put all of his artistic work aside. And he started running scared. Listen to this. He canceled a contract he had to buy uh, almost a brand new home in Pasadena, California. But because it was so busy living there, he canceled the contract and he began to seek a place where his children could be safe. He planned every possible means to escape trouble and danger. He imagined the presence of danger in everything he saw. The location for this property and this house that he was going to build had to be in a remote place because he knew if he could get it remote and he bought 12 acres, he said, I know my children will be safe then. After he bought the property, he posted signs near the road that said children at play. He even personally built a fenced in yard in a play area for his children. And he built it so it was impossible for a vehicle to get within 50 foot of that, of that fence that he had built. And then it became to the house. And the house, the building of the house was so meticulous that it about drove the contractor crazy. Because everything was safety, everything was danger, everything was protection. And they went to, to great expense uh, to have extra safety in his house. And then they moved on to the garage. And he built it so that only one car would ever, ever, ever go in that garage. And it would be his own car, nobody else's. And then when he got the garage built, he stepped back and he surveyed everything. And he saw danger. And so he called the contractor back and said, we want you to come and bring your concrete forms and fix a concrete turnaround. Because he had a fear and an anxiety in his mind. He felt threatened that he could, somebody could, he could back out of the garage. And if he didn't have this constructed just right, he might endanger one of his children. So he called the concrete contractor back. He brought his forms. He began to, you know, complete the plans and form it all up and get ready to pour this concrete safety zone and turn around for his vehicle. All of a sudden, a rainstorm came. And the contractor was rained out. And exactly one week before it was finished, Mr. Zorthian backed his car out. And his little 18-month-old boy jumped out of the arms of his sister, ran behind the vehicle, and he backed over his own son. You say, well, why are you saying all of that? Because I'm telling you that in life, in life there are no guarantees. Come on now. Just living in life and trying to protect ourselves, amen, and do things by ourselves, amen, there is no fail-safe plan. 
Hey man, there are no absolutes and there are no guarantees. Come on now, everything you do is a risk. If you fly, you take a risk of crashing. When you drive, you take a risk of colliding. If you laugh, you take a risk of being called a fool. I mean, life is like that. Oh, come on now. Hey man, but Satan, hey man, in a spiritual sense, hey man, wants us to come, hey man, into the church house. And everything we look at, we see a danger. We see a danger in worship. We see a danger in the message. Hey man, we see a danger in the preaching. And we sit on our pew, hunkered down and scared and afraid to move and get in revival. And I'm going to tell you, my friend, if you want to be brought to a state of living ineffective for God, amen, you let the devil have his way and you'll never do nothing. Or you can rise up and say, devil, amen, the Lord is here. Amen, the Lord is here. Can anybody shout amen? Why don't we let the devil know that the Lord is here? Come on, Sister Teresa, I'm quitting. Oh, hallelujah. He tries to get every one of us to focus on the danger and the peril. Come on now. And we come into church and we hunker down. We cower. We're afraid to move. You know it's the truth. We see somebody that looks holding us in Walmart, and we peek around the corner. We're afraid to ask them where they're from. You've never done that, have you? And you go over another aisle, and you think, well, they're probably oneness, or I'd say something to them. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And we cower down and we hunker down and we let the devil just have his way. Oh, God. Oh, come on now. He tries to get us to focus on every dangerous thing, every perilous thing, until we find ourselves running scared our whole Christian life. Amen. We only see the what ifs instead of the why nots. Come on now. Why not believe God? The Lord's there. Why not pray again? The Lord's there. Why not go around the wall? The Lord's there. Why not go down to Jordan and dip? The Lord's there. Why not lift up holy hands? The Lord's there. Why not shout and shine? The Lord's there. Why not smile at the world and tell them you're saved? Amen. The Lord's there, ain't he? Amen. Why not sing another song? Amen. The Lord's there. Amen. You understand the devil's dilemma. Amen. It should never be our difficulty. We should never forget that the Lord is here. Can anybody shout amen? Amen. Why don't you take back your experience? Why don't you tell the devil enough? I'm coming to get my stuff. Why don't you recover all? And quit being a doormat. And rise up. Amen. And put the devil in his place. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Let's stand. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise God. My wife up here. When she was about five years old, she had something wrong. They didn't know what it was. She'd pass out and fall off the swings. Kind of like some kind of seizure. Her mom and dad, you know, took her to the doctors. I guess nobody knew what it was, but they took her to the altar. Come on now. It's in a low estate like that that the devil says, I'm going to move in and possess everything you've ever believed. I'm going to move in and possess everything that you've ever been taught. I'm going to move in and take away everything you've ever embraced. Come on now. Hallelujah. But they kept bringing her to the altar and somewhere, somehow, the Lord healed her. She's never had another one since she was five years old. You see, the devil's dilemma was this. The Lord was there. Woo! How many preachers did the devil say, I'll take him, I'll get him, I'll destroy him. But his dilemma was the Lord was there. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God, and he wasn't just going to walk in and conquer because the Lord was there. E. Stanley Jones put it like this. He said, if we're not careful, it becomes the paralysis of analysis. <laughs> Have you ever analyzed it? Have you ever looked at it? Come on now. You tried to find a way out and an answer, solve it, resolve it. Instead of finding an answer, you got more aggravated. It's the paralysis of analysis. Just don't let the devil have his way in the first place. Can anybody shout amen? Hey, Amen. Just rebuke him. Resist him. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise God. To him who lives in fear, everything rustles. Woo! The enemies boast. Have you heard it? Maybe you heard it tonight. Well, I want to preach to you about the everlasting barrier. The Lord's there. Praise God. I'm closing. I'm closing. Ezekiel 48 and 35. And the name of that city shall be the Lord is there. Jehovah Shem. The name of that city shall be. Jehovah claimed Judea. That's mine. This is mine. My possession. I'm going to put my name there. The Lord is there. It's going to be the name of that city. And the enemy could not remove him. You see, they might have been able to go into a heathen country and take out all the idol gods, but they couldn't go into Judea and take out Jehovah God. Whoa! Hallelujah! And Jesus said, You're a city. Are y'all following me? You're a city. Set on a hill. I wonder what your name is. I wonder what the name of the city is. I think it's the same name. The Lord's there. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know what, you know, what kind of threat has been placed on you. It might be just something where the devil said, you're not going to make it. You can't live holy. You're not going to go to heaven. We had a teenage girl one time we dealt with that she thought she blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Over and over in her mind, she thought she blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You couldn't put a finger on her life anywhere. But it was that threat. I know I preached too long. But I hope I ain't preached too long where we can't pray just a little bit and let the devil know I'm tired of being your doormat. You forgot your dilemma, devil. The Lord's here. Does anybody feel the Lord here? Does anybody know the Lord's here tonight? And if you're saved, you're a city set on the hill. Amen. And God said, I'm going to put my name on your life. Jehovah Shammah. Praise God. Let's come and pray tonight, everyone that would. Maybe you've been feeling threatened by the devil. You've been struggling, grappling. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost and you've been in a battle. Maybe you need to be sanctified over an area in your life. Amen. Maybe, I don't know, it's something in the past that you've been struggling with and the devil's been breathing down the back of your neck, lying and threatening and telling you thus and thus. Oh, don't be the devil's doormat. Amen. Remind him the Lord is here. Amen. Remind him that God is here tonight. Remind him that the Lord is with us. Oh, I wish I could.